or did you stop compromising did you stop making room for that person to grow and to develop and things like that i always feel like you know there's a difference between compromise sacrifice and obedience and True. so yes. on um one of the episodes with black men unfiltered i was speaking about uh when i first got married i was in my 20s as well and honestly 20s Generally, you're for exploration. Your brain is not even developed until you're 25. OK, so like you're trying to still figure yourself out. Um, you are still evolving. You're still changing. And so we went through our premarital counseling and stuff like that. And, you know, <laughs> I had like a breakdown because we had decided we had did it. So meaning I agreed as well that we were going to close my account and combine our finances, you know, before, you know, marriage and stuff or were we already married? I can't remember. Doesn't matter. It hurt nonetheless. Like, ah, because that's, <laughs> well, that's difficult. That's difficult. Yes. Because, you know, you don't want to feel like you're compromising your independency sometimes. Like, yeah. if you work hard to be in a certain space, it feels sometimes that, you know, like, oh, my gosh, what it taught me, I will say this, what it taught me overall was that I had to be obedient to myself, to the father, the God I serve, mm -hmm. and to my marriage. Not even to him, right? Like it didn't, he was the last person that I'm being obedient to or whatever. But, you know, I have this thing about myself that I answer, I don't just answer to my husband. There's a person I'm answering to me first. And yeah. how I feel about what I'm going to do and how I'm going to transfer. But it taught me trust. Overall, it taught me trust that. I could trust him and that he wasn't in, he wasn't going to harm. He wasn't going to take advantage of me. He wasn't, it was a lesson that happened over years. Like I still felt the ways, you know, I still felt a little ways about it, but I trucked on through and it really did benefit our marriage overall. So just wanted to share that for the women who are successful and you get to the point where it, still protect yourself. Don't. Yeah. I didn't have a lot to protect in the beginning. So that's why, you know, but if you are well, well established, I definitely, you know, make sure that you're protected and you have things in order, especially if you have kids, mm -hmm. um, previous marriages and things like that. Make sure your paperwork, your documentation and that you speak about that prior to getting um, married and go to premarital counseling. If you can. So. Yes, yes, and it's and it's it's kind of based on your situation too, because I think that's the ideal way to kind of do things. Some of us are a little bit more, so that was kind of part of my journey too. And honestly, I still got my own checking account, um, but we did compromise. So that was a situation where we had to compromise because so I was very rigid. Yeah. Yeah, and again, of course, I grew up that way. Like, uh, no, you don't be letting no man know everything you got going on, and. Mm -hmm. You know, I just had kind of that mentality. And so I went into marriage thinking like, oh, no, I'm going to keep like my bank account, like everything. You don't need to know how much I make. You don't need to know how much. You make. Like, you don't need to know any of that. We just going to go half on these bills, you know, and pay these bills like, and that's about it. You know, you don't need to know anything I got going on. And I'm not going to be asking you what you got going on. But it was, there was a selfish part of me that wanted to know. Like, you know, what he was making and what he was doing. But of course, I didn't want to do the same for myself. So, right. Like you said, through counseling, through all that good stuff, we were able to compromise and decide because it was honestly, it was just too much for me. I had to gradually, you know, I had to gradually go into, 
you know, being able to have a joint account with somebody. And so right. we agreed that we would still have our separate accounts where like our payroll check goes to, but you know, that we would have the joint account where we would pay the bills from. And so that was the compromise that we had to do because it took me some time like to get comfortable with, you know, I, I just wasn't comfortable like right off the bat going into a joint account with somebody and both of our payroll checks are coming in there and but again, I had to grow at the same time, but I have I to mean, really- You can still be growing now because that still, it sounds like it may <laughs> still be. <laughs> I mean, I, mean, I, I had to I, learn I like, what? if you get a bonus check. Yes! <laughs> I'm a long way because at that time when I was 21, I don't, yeah, it was no way. Like, no, we are not, we not having joint checking accounts. Like, because I'm going to need to know, like, why are you spending that? Like, I'm going to be called, like, I was literally a like, person that will be calling you like, hey. And the other thing is, too, again, with marriage, is two totally different backgrounds. So we had two very pr different perspectives on saving, you right. know on expenses and what you should spend on you know we had two totally different perspectives on having you know money for a rainy day and what that money looked like you know versus if you should have five hundred dollars you should have five thousand dollars it was two totally different perspectives like on everything so it, it was just like i said we ended up ultimately compromising and even to this day we still have that setup where our payroll checks come into our separate bank accounts but we do have the joint bank account where we pay bills from and where we save jointly so and that's what works for us you know ideally like you said your situation it works for you to close your bank you got every everything is combined like just recently i'm i'm getting ready to start like a business and stuff and so you know I think I, I still had to mature with handling money as well. So that's like a whole process because, you know, generally if you're both spenders, you ain't going to have no money or there's the saver and there's the spender. There's the, you know, and I tend, I tend to hoard money. Okay. Like I like, I like to see it add up, but mm -hmm. I do like to, when I get into a, a space of spending, I will spend. So mm -hmm. like, you know, and I think my husband, like he has things that he likes that he will pay top dollar for. And that's just, mm -hmm. you know, what he will do. Like he'll just, this is this, but we never like feel like, you know, we can't do certain things. I'm a bit more ambitious. So like, I do like to do things, but I always have to check and make sure that, Hey, it's within budgets and means and all that. And that's mm -hmm. like, the compromise piece because you want to be able you don't because sometimes with money it could feel like a controlling true situation right um it can make you feel like oh i can't i can't i can't um when we were getting ready to buy our home we were very strict and stringent like, about like everything we have to count everything um so we wanted to make sure that we you know were financially savvy going through that process so because buying a home is like a whole nother level that you know you're stepping into in a bigger responsibility so definitely want to make sure that you know you are compromising in a safe way not in a way because i think some people feel like compromising is like you telling somebody you know like you compromise to the point where you feel that your own personal growth is becoming stagnant or you're not being able to move you're not being able to learn and i'm like that is just not okay so like yeah. you don't want to lose your sense of self mm -hmm. you know when you're going through certain things so how do you feel about kids and mm -hmm.